my first vegan friend lived on potato chips and Coca-Cola. I have no idea what a vegan diet is, or do I have any hope that a vegan diet would cure anybody of anything. But I know a starch-based diet does, and it happens to also be a vegan diet in most cases. So, you know, I have, I have some strong, as you can well tell, I have some strong feelings about vegetarian and vegan diets. I see so many people trying to get healthy, and they will uh, switch to a nutrient-dense diet of kale and broccoli. It doesn't seem to work. Or they'll, once they find out that kale and broccoli and cauliflower don't work, then they'll try and look for calories, and they look to nuts and seeds, and then they get fat. Or uh, one of these uh, special margarines, and then they get fat. And they just can never figure out how to get well, and they can't figure out how to make a vegan diet work, and neither can I. And I don't even know of any population that's ever lived on a vegan diet. But I know of, uh, I know that nine and a half billion of the 10 billion people who walk this earth have lived on a starch-based diet, which can easily be a vegan diet. It happens to be in my personal life. But the most important thing is to get most of your calories from starches with a few from vegetables and fruits. And as far as the animal thing goes, there are many reasons to say no, I think. I have to say that whole food plant-based still doesn't give me the direction I want. And, and that's why I'm so adamant, you may say obnoxious, but I'm so, I'm so focused on getting people to use the word starch. The word starch was eliminated from, uh, from our, uh, our word usage in 1977 by the food industry. Your grandma used to talk about having various starches for lunch and dinner. And then in, the 19, in 1977, when they had the big debates for the dietary goals of the US, they decided to change it to complex carbohydrate. What in the hell is a complex carbohydrate? I wouldn't even know where to buy one or find one or how to eat one, but I sure know how to eat starches. So if you don't have that word back in your family's vocabulary, you can't, you can't, as far as I'm concerned, you, you don't know what to eat. Whole food, plant-based. Is that kale? Is that cabbage? I mean, what is it? It's just not descriptive enough for me. I know this is the wrong place to bring up that argument, but you gave me the chance. <laughs> the, the USDA, in conjunction with the meat and dairy industry, have, uh, when they write their policies, like the dietary guidelines for Americans, they write every five years. They got a new one coming out next year. When they write the guidelines, because the USDA uh, is dominated by people from the meat and the dairy and craft and other food industries, they write the guidelines so the consumer doesn't stand a chance. When they talk about the bad things about food, they say avoid saturated fat and cholesterol. Well, what's a saturated fat? It's meat, dairy, and eggs. You see, if they said don't eat meat, dairy, and eggs, then the American consumer might stand a chance, but industry would suffer. So they don't allow that, those terms in guideline policies. Likewise, they've eliminated the word starch so that you can't act as a consumer. You don't know what to eat. You eat complex carbohydrate. What? The words are important. Uh, that's going to end up going away. You know, one of the most important things that ever happened to me in my life was that I went into drug rehab for four weeks. There's people out there that are alcoholics and drug addicts. You know, there's help for you. You, know, you can start by going to AA, going to Alcoholics Anonymous, you know. Because, uh, you know, people people that are close to you, you know, if, you know, I had a friend of mine 
This guy, I spent I don't know how many hours upon hours on the phone talking that. You know, I mean, oh my God. The guy, you know, he, he would never, he would never, he would never do anything past, past that pretty much. You know, he wore his friends out. He wore his friends completely out. I stuck with him. I would talk to him any time he called and try to. But even I finally had to let the guy go when he started attacking me. He started attacking me, and I was the I was the last guy I was the last guy that he had that I know of. Actually, there was a couple of others that might have been around longer than me. But I'm pretty sure that they didn't spend any time with the guy talking him down and stuff like that. I mean, it's just sometimes you know you have friends that just you try to help them. And sometimes it just doesn't work, you know. And you the friends get worn out. The friends get worn out. You know, if you got to go to you know, go to AA, try to do something because, you know, sometimes you wear your friends out. You know, people want to help you. And you just wear them out. You try over and over and over again to try to help somebody and they just continue to to not get the message and they become abusive. I mean, how could somebody become abusive to somebody that actually cares about them? Well, maybe it's because of their upbringing and maybe that's the way they were raised. You know, maybe their parents were weird or something happened or whatever but after a while even the people that want to help you are, are just gonna they just can't they can't take it anymore you know they try to help and try to help and try to help and if you're a person out there that's doing alcohol and drugs you know, maybe maybe your friends aren't the answer. Your friends want to help you, but the answer's got to be, you know, paying attention to the advice of the people that give you. If it's decent advice, go to AA. You know, go to AA. People, people there will be good examples, and they'll show you, hey, you know, we care about you. We've been where you are. But if you're wearing your friends out, I mean, one of these days, your friends are just going to say, you know, I can't take it anymore. That's what happened with me. I got a message on my machine one day from this guy that I had been, I had spent, I don't know, years with this guy. Oh, my God. He left a message on my machine that related to something that I was very concerned about. That was it. You know, I try to be a nice person. I try to be a kind person. I try to help people. But you know what? Sometimes, you know, if you if you wear if you wear a person out, they get worn out. You know, so try to get some help for you folks out there that are alcoholics, drug addicts. I did a video on gambling. It's my biggest video. I did a video on gambling. That's the only thing I've done on YouTube that I can look at and say, okay, I think I actually helped somebody. This video is probably not going to help anybody because nobody's going to see it. It's not really an AA meeting. It's not a drug addict thing. It's it's a personal thing. You know, it's not it's not it's it's about how people react personally with their friends. You know, you can't you can't just you can't be abusive to your friends and expect your friends to stick around. My buddy, I mean, everybody just dropped off from that guy. They too, they couldn't be around him anymore. He was too much. He was too much. He he was sucking everybody dry. But I mean, I was in it. I wasn't. You know, I know the guy's problems. You know, I know the guy's problems. You know, AA is a good place for people that have drug and alcohol problems. I think. 
And there are people there that want to help. They, they go to meetings to help others. But my buddy would never go. He'd never go to AA. He would never go to NA. He would, you know, he went to NA, I think, maybe a couple of times. But he was the kind of person that he knew more about it. Every, I don't care what the subject is, if it was medicine or medicine, microbiology or M&M production. I mean, he knew everything about everything and more than anybody else. And he kind of got that was from his father. His father was, it, I mean, they, you know, whenever you're a person that's sick and you go to a doctor and you know more about the doctor and you're arguing with the doctor, I and mean, after a while, even doctors want to turn away from you. At some point, you got to surrender to it and say, okay, I don't know what I'm doing. I need some help. Yeah, I didn't I didn't I didn't I didn't like the idea of having to just cut communication from my friend, but he wasn't even my friend at that at that point. He was just some guy that you know, that I would see him, I would actually try to avoid seeing him. I would I would see him I would see him at the coffee shop and I would just one time I saw him walk in the coffee shop and as soon as I saw him walk in I walked out. I just couldn't be around the guy. I remember that there was a movie, The Fixer, I think it was, or something like that. It was about some guy who, was it The Fixer? It was some guy that he was, he would go up to people and touch them. If they were having a good luck run on the gambling, he would touch them and take away their good luck kind of a thing. I mean, at some point, you know, don't be that kind of person. Don't be a person that's taking away somebody's good luck or, you know, I, I tell you, my buddy, he, he was, after a while, people just couldn't be around him anymore. Still to this day. I bring up his name, and it's like, well, you know. And we've known this guy for 20-something years. I knew him, for, knew him as long as I knew Roberto. Just about, no, not quite that long, but Close. Close. I see the guy walking down the street and everybody's just like, you know, it's just, I mean, it's sad. Sad, but the guy wouldn't pay attention. He wouldn't do anything. He just knew everything more than everybody else. And he just, he just couldn't, he just couldn't take any advice from every, anybody else because he always knew better than everybody else. As far as I know, he doesn't have anybody. Sad deal. Well, I don't know what time it is. I had a nap today. I had a nap earlier. You know, I was going crazy, making so much stuff and everything, and working hard and. <clears throat> Um, that might be part of the reason I feel bad. I think the reason I'm feeling bad is because I've been drinking too much coffee again. I don't know how you, how, I mean, how, how, why is it that I start feeling better and I fuck it up by going back and doing the same old shit? It's sad, man. What time is it? 10.15, 10.35. See, ordinarily at 10.35, I'd be right over there working. Working till the wee hours. I can't do it right now. I just, I'm just exhausted. Just exhausted. Well. But earlier, you know the guy at the flea market, the guy with the pistol, he collects knives and stuff. Let me show you a great knife. This 
is a great knife. It's a personal knife. It's a case. This is awarded in 1980 for quality, quality control, superior effort. That was the uh, that was the department that I worked in. And they gave they gave us knives. Beautiful case knife. I eventually became I, I eventually the nineteen eighties about the time I started. Started yeah, I started matter of fact that's the year I started, nineteen eighty. By nineteen eighty six I think it was. I had gone from the, I was the, I actually had the, the best job in that whole department. And even if I, even after having the best job in the whole department, it, I couldn't take it anymore. You know, it wasn't one of those deals where It wasn't one of those deals, you know, where uh, it really wasn't one of those deals where you, uh, what would be the word? It's freaking dark out here. It's a half moon, but it's still freaking dark. What am I doing out here? It wasn't one of those deals where I did a lot of contemplation, you know? on that uh, situation with the, uh, with the job. I just went to work one day and I don't remember exactly what happened. But it was just that I just looked around. I had the best job in the whole thing. I just got my stuff. I went over to the to the boss's office. Said, you know what? I'm leaving. Gave him all my stuff. You know. So the, the boss, you know, we we got in the got in the truck and he drove around or something. We. That was the end of it. Well, that's kind of like how what happened, kind of like what happened to me when I was in L.A. I had a good job there too, relatively speaking. It was a hard job. A brutal schedule. Ten-hour days. It was, ten hour, ten, it was a ten-hour day, five, fifty-hour week. 45 minutes lunch that you didn't get paid for and it was just freaking brutal. I mean, it was a brutal, brutal schedule. Between commuting to and from and then the work, I went to the, I was, I was standing there, the boss was there, I said, you know what? I'm leaving. That's it, I, I quit, I can't take it anymore. And so he got in the, we got in the car and he took me over and had lunch together, say goodbye, and that was that. I get along well with people. I do. In a work environment, because I'm a team player, you know. <laughs> you know. A team player in a job means you know you're the hired help. That's one thing I never lost sight of. 
in working, I never lost sight of the fact that I was, in fact, the hired help. I'm Hella Rodney. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.